All right, here we come with Gabriel Jesus' commitment at Arsenal. He is going to hate to pronounce it while he's with Brazil in the international break. Smash the like button close to 200 times. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. And we're also going to talk about Adagula. He's one of those players that Arsenal wanted to sign, but Real Madrid convinced him and obviously signed for the club of Real Madrid. And Luka Modric was really so much pivotal in his decision to snub Arsenal, Barcelona, to sign for Real Madrid. And it's going to hit to be vocal about this particular player. And Ange Porzekeglu, Porzekeglu has going to hit to be named the manager of the Premier League for the month of September. Back-to-back -back wins. Congratulations to him. I know Arsenal fans don't feel well because they're really having a very huge battle and rivalry with Tottenham Hotspur. So we thank God for the gift of life. And here we come to bring you the latest news and information as far as all this is really concerned. <clears throat> now, Jesus has gone ahead and obviously said the following. But in all what I was going to say, I picked out one thing. That is his commitment to play wherever Ateta wants him to play. Jesus said... It's worth pointing out that I've been playing a lot of roles at Arsenal. Obviously, when I chose to move from Manchester City to Arsenal, Edu and Ateta spoke to me and I made it clear that I would like to play number nine. That was Arsenal's idea for me to play number nine. In there for you, the number nine role. Then he said this season has been different. We've had injuries and in the last few games, I've played three up front. For a while, I thought I would just say I wanted to play number nine, but I'm here to help the team. I'm blessed by God to have this talent and the facility to play in all the three positions. That is Gabriel Jesus for you. And he comes in through to obviously say this after he's going to head to lead Arsenal <coughs> to a 1 0 win against Man City to be now two points ahead of Man City. And I really believe that this player is really one of those players that every team in the world would like to have. You know, even Pep Guardiola came out and said that he never wanted to lose Gabriel Jesus, but because Gabriel Jesus wanted to leave the club of Man City to go elsewhere, where he is obviously going to be appreciated as a number nine, that's why he left, and he was left with only one year on his contract. So that's why Pep Guardiola let him go. And for Pep Guardiola, you've seen him at several occasions that he does not, and he will never He'll never at any point really stop a player from leaving Manchester City if at all he wants to go. We've seen it when Ika Gundogan wanted to go, um, when Raheem Sterling wanted to go, when uh, David Silva wanted to go, when um, Gabriel Jesus Zinchenko wanted to go. He just told them, I wish you the best of luck. Because the manager knows it that every time you stop a player from obviously leaving you, and obviously going elsewhere, it obviously affects you. It obviously affects the dressing room levels and the discipline of the dressing room. So for Gabriel Jesus, he came in at Arsenal to be played as a number nine. And obviously, when the entire team is fit, he's being played as a number nine at the club of Arsenal. Though recently, Arsenal has found themselves in a position of really having Bukayo Saka injured, like in the game of Bournemouth where he ended up as a right forward in the game of RC Loans. He also ended up playing as a right forward because Saka got injured and Ateta brought on Eddie Nketiah. Then in the game of Man City, he played the entire 90, all the full 90 as a right forward because Bukayo Saka never made it even to the bench of the team of Arsenal. But it shows you his commitment to really deliver for the side of Arsenal. And obviously... He is really one of the versatile players that Arsenal are really having to obviously rove around that front three of Arsenal. And it's really great for him because you'll obviously want to have a player like him around your team. Not one, all two, all three, but close to four or five players that are needed to be really so much, <clears throat> so much um, dynamic when it comes to really playing different positions of the field of play. If at all you are having Jesus, Kai Havertz, um, Trossard, that means the front three is safe because 
anywhere you get an injury, any of those three players can come in through and obviously lead that line. There is another one, Emmett Smith throw with where he's only gonna have to come good. He can also play in the midfield. So it shows you how good it is how good he is. I mean, look at Declan Rice, he's a player who can play in the single pivot, he can play as a number eight, he can also play in the central defense. <clears throat> that is good. Benjamin White, he can play as a right back, central midfield, and he can play into the central defense. And Julian Timber is also a viable. He can play as a midfielder, he can play as a ref, right back, left back, central defense. That is, by the way, I think that's the most versatile player that Arsenal really have. He can play as a left back, he can play as a right back, he can play in the two positions of the central defense, whether right or left. He can also play in the central midfield that is julian timber for you and it shows you exactly what this obviously offers especially to the available people at arsenal and Mikel Ateta as a team that however much jesus is committed but there are even other players that can obviously come in through and obviously try to do the job in the absentia of this man and that is really huge for any team if at all they are to perform at different levels because if you're competing with manchester city <coughs> they're having a julian alves who can play literally in almost the four attacking positions of the pitch. He can play as a central attacking midfielder. He can play as a right forward, left forward. He can lead the line. And by the way, even if Erwin Haaland is away, you cannot miss him because Julian Alves will lead the line. You're having players like Bernardo Silva. He literally plays every midfield position and every attack-minded position. You're having players like Vadio. He can play as a left back. He can play as a left-sided center back. The same applies to Nathan Ake. You're having Ruben Diaz, you know, you're having John Stones, who can play as a right back, he can play as a central defender, and now he has gone ahead to try to play him in the midfield in the double pivot. So that's what an elite team is supposed to do. And I can obviously take you back to the team of Arsenal that was really the invisible. They had very many versatile players that obviously could get the job done, you know. Gilberto Silva can play as a CDM. Can play as a defender, could play as a number eight. You know, Robert Perez, he could lead the line, he could play as a left forward, he could play as a right forward. Jumbag, he could lead the line, he could play as a midfielder, he can play as a left, a right winger, and a left winger. You know, they had lots of players. Patrick Vieira, you know, there was, um, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, mm, he was not yet. Colo Toure, you know, he was another one who could obviously get the job done and dusted. So, it's really huge for the club of Arsenal that they're having a committed, versatile player in Gabriel Jesus and is willing to obviously take it to where it deserves to be. And we pray to it that he obviously gets his number nine role back and he gets more chances greater to him as they're supposed to be coming in through. So they drew 1-1 one -one with the side of Brazil. Sorry. With the side of Venezuela. When they played, he came off the bench. And um, I think that's the only game they're going to play. Let me see. Uh, is there any other game they're playing? Oh, they're playing Uruguay, by the way. They're playing Uruguay on the 18th. That is on Tuesday or Wednesday. One of those days. In Brazil, it's going to be Tuesday. Here, it's going to be Wednesday. That's when they're playing Uruguay. So that is Brazil taking on Uruguay. Huge game. And I believe... He might obviously get into the starting position because Richardson is obviously one of those that is not putting out results as called in for by the side of Brazil. Now, let's go to Luka Modric. I was going to head and told us about Adagula. Remember, Luka Modric is the one who called Adagula to convince him to join Real Madrid. He told him that this is my last season here. I'm giving the shot number 10 to you when I leave. That's what he told him. And now... He has gone ahead to let us know that Adagula, great boy with great talent, it's a shame that due to an injury, he hasn't had the chance to really show it to the Madrid fans yet. He has a bright future ahead of him, and I believe he will bring a lot of happiness to Real Madrid fans. And Adagula is really one of those players that you will obviously want to really have. You know, he's talented, left-footed player. And it looks like he's coming in through to obviously battle it with, is it Lawal? Let me see Barcelona here. The boy is called who? The 16-year-old who is valued now 50 million euros. He's Lawal, right? 
Yamal. So Yamal is obviously going to tussle it out well with this man because they found themselves in a situation that doesn't allow them to obviously kickstart off to where they want to be because of their injury. But for a while, he's obviously firing in all cylinders and he's going to hate obviously coming through and really put up some good stats. He has gone ahead to play nine La Liga games, one goal, one assist. And in the Champions League, two games, zero goals, zero assists. Right now, he is the most valuable young player. That is it. And if Adagula really returns and obviously puts up his collection together, he's obviously going to come in through and obviously put in a show and see to it that Real Madrid and Barcelona are really having some of the youngsters that are really competing and they are playing in the same position. All are right forwards and they play with the left foot and they're waiting to see how Adagula is obviously going to come in through and get into the team of Real Madrid. Remember, Barcelona told him, we are bringing you next summer, but we are signing you today. We are leaving you in your team. That is Fanabachi, I think. And Real Madrid told him that we are taking you this season and we are putting you direct into our starting eleven. That's the difference that was made by this side of Barcelona of Real Madrid. So let's wait and see how Adagula is going to return and obviously let us know what he thinks about it because everything is obviously in waiting to see whether they obviously get it where they deserve to be. Now last let's talk about Ange Potsakeglu beating Ateta Mikel, Pep Guardiola and very many others that we are nominated to the Premier League Month to Premier League Manager of the Month Award of September back to back and Ange Potskeglu has gone ahead to win it and lift it in high gear. And he deserves it, by the way, because Spurs have gone ahead to obviously not lose any game again. Them and Arsenal are the only two teams that are really unbeaten ever since this league really started. And Ange Potskeglu has been named the Premier League manager for the month of September. Looking through, looking through his September fixtures, he has gone obviously to really play them well. He first played um, on the 2nd of September. He beat Burnley by 5 goals to 2. Then 16th September, he beat Sheffield by 2 goals to 1. Drew with Arsenal 2-2. Two -two. And um, on Saturday 30th September, he beat Liverpool by 2 goals to 1. So he played 4 games. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 games. And he won three and drew one with Arsenal. That's why he has gone ahead to be named the manager for the month of September. Remember, he was the Premier League month for the manager of August. So it shows you that he's obviously imposing himself onto the league. And it's obviously very important to situate that he gets himself into these levels as a manager of Tottenham Hotspur. So guys, thank you very much for watching. To tell me your thoughts about Gabby Jesus' commitment to Arsenal pronounced. And what do you make about Adagula? Do you think he's ever going to come in through and obviously the ground running at Real Madrid? And lastly, what are your thoughts about, about Ange Potakeglu beating Mikel Ateta for the Premier League manager of the month award of September? We thank God for the gift of life. May the living to God bless you abundantly, the Muslims. Barak Lau Fikum, Rokan David remains my name. I sign out for now. See you later. Don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, comment, and share. I'm out.